are we gonna do today? We're gonna make acid analyst. <laughs> All your glassware is located in your organic drawer under the hood. For this experiment, you'll need first need two 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks, a 10 and a 50 mil graduated cylinder. You will need to label the first Erlenmeyer mixture A, and you'll need to label the second Erlenmeyer mixture B. This is a dispensing hood. All the liquids will be found here. We're going to take two milliliters of concentrated HDL. Just pull the pump up and push it down. Now it's in your graduated cylinder. And then pour it into the 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer labeled mixture A. Next, you're going to add 30 milliliters of water into your graduated cylinder. And then take that 30 milliliters of water and pour it into mixture A. Next, we're going to go back to our dispensing hood, open up the aniline, pipette out two milliliters of aniline, put it in our graduated cylinder, and then take that aniline back to our hood and pour it into mixture A. Now swirl mixture A, put it on the hood, and let it sit. Now we're going to start getting our chemicals for mixture B. We're coming over to the balance area, tearing the balance. Once it's zeroed, we will add 2.4 grams of anhydrous sodium acetate. As you put sodium acetate into your weighing boat, you want to weigh out to as closely to 2.4 grams as possible. If you don't have too much, like here's 2.6, you can take a little bit off. We finally get 2.3945 grams, and that will work. Then we're going to take it over to our hood. Now we're going to put 15 mils of water into our graduated cylinder, pour that into the mixture B flask. Now we're going to get our powder funnel, which is a funnel we can use to put our 2.4 grams of so anhydrous sodium acetate into our flask. Water and the acetate we will mix together. And once that is mixed and all the sodium acetate has been dissolved, and you can do this just by vigorously shaking it like you see here, we're going to now go back over to our dispensing hood. And once, once we're at our dispensing hood, we're now going to add three mils of acetic anhydride using the pump the same way we did before and come back and pour it into our mixture B flask. Now we swirl both flasks, pour mixture B into mixture A, take the mixture A flask, and as you can see, immediately white crystals are starting to form. This is actually our product, or our acid analyte, which we have now synthesized. Now we've come over to our ice machine. We take our empty beaker, fill it with ice, put our crystals in our ice to ma ensure maximum yield. Once we've done this, we have to set up a vacuum filtration, which we will use to isolate the crystals. You can see a Buchner funnel is being fitted with filter adapters, then into the filter flask. Once that done, that's done, we have to attach it to the back of the hood. We do this with a clamp. We use the clamp to attach to the back of the hood. Once that is secure, we're going to take our vacuum filtration set up, the glassware, clamp it around, attach a hose, which is really the hose to the aspirator. Once the filter, once that's hooked up, we have to put filter paper in our Buchner funnel. And then we can look at the connections to make sure they're okay. We can follow them around to the button in front that says CW or cold water. We can turn the cold water on. This will start the aspirator working. We can wet the filter paper with a little distilled water, and we can ensure that the vacuum is actually providing the suction. Now we're ready to filter our acid aniline. We pour it into our Buchner funnel. As you can see, the crystals are staying inside the funnel, and the liquid is being separated from the crystals and falling to the bottom of the flask. To get all the crystals out of the original Erlenmeyer flask, you can rinse the flask with a little bit of water and just pour it into the Buchner funnel. And this is how we isolate our acid aniline. Once the crystals have been isolated, we have to dismantle the vacuum aspirator. We always will pull the tube off of the vacuum filter flask first. 
Uh, sometimes that can be a little challenging as you see here, but gently remove the hose. Do not pull it quickly, otherwise you may cut yourself. Then turn the cold water off, then take the Buchner funnel out of the flask and just gently put your crystals onto a watch glass. You can see we're collecting all our nice white crystals here. And be careful to gingerly only take out the crystals and not the filter paper. You can see I'm breaking up the crystals so the maximum amount of surface area is exposed to the air so that we can get maximum amount of drying. Now we need to weigh our crude crystals. You can see we're putting them into a tarred weighing boat. Once we have that, if there's a little bit of crystals left on the watch glass, we can leave that for a melting point. So now we have our almost three grams of crude product. We have to purify it. We do that by recrystallization using a minimum amount of solvent, in this case water. We're going to put it in a 250 milliliter flask. As you can see, there's a coffee stir inside of it. Always put that in to ensure even boiling. As you can see, we're filling up about 60 mils of water. We're going to use again 20 mils per one gram so 20 times 3 is 60. We're going to put it on the hot plate. Don't forget to plug the hot plate in otherwise it won't heat. Turn it to high and we're going to just let that heat to boiling. While we let that come to boil we can now take our dirty glassware to the sink to wash. Okay now we're back at our hood while we're waiting for the liquid to boil we can reset up our vacuum filtration. And as you can see, we're doing the same steps we did before. And don't forget to hook up your hose to your vacuum aspirator so it does provide suction. And also, never forget to put a piece of filter paper in your funnel so you can collect all your new purified crystals. We're looking at the water here, making sure it's hot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, once it's at a boiling temperature, we're going to take our powder funnel, put it in the flask, put our crude crystals into the hot water. The goal of crystal recrystallization is that all the solid will dissolve, and we just have to wait a little bit for all the solid to dissolve. And once the solid's all dissolved, we'll put it on a cork ring so it can cool slowly, take out our coffee stir, turn off our hot plate, and just let that sit let that sit till it comes to room temperature. We want to make sure that we have slow cooling so all the pure crystals will fall out of solution and all the impurities will stay in solution. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a watch glass, cover the Erlmeyer with the watch glass, set it at the back of the hood to cool. We use the Erlmeyer to cover it so no impurities or dirt can fall in. Now you can see after we've let it cool for a while you crystals have formed. Once crystals have formed, we'll put it on an ice bath to make sure we get all the crystals out. We can use a little spatula to scratch the inside of the flask. Scratching helps induce crystallization and get the last bit of pure crystals out. We have our vacuum filtration already set up. We turn on the water. Once the water is turned on and suction is happening, again, all we do is filter. Now as we're filtering, the purified crystals are being captured in the Buchner funnel and the liquid with the impurities are going to the bottom of the filter flask. We swirl, swirl and dump as I like to call it. We swirl the flask to get all the crystals in solution and then we just dump it into the Buchner funnel. One, let it sit to ensure that all the liquid is off. If you want, you can take a little bit of distilled water again and rinse your flask just like we did the last time. We push the funnel just to make sure all the suction is happening and all the liquid has dropped down and the crystals are definitely separated from the liquid. Now we need to disassemble the vacuum filter, pull the aspirator, shut off the water, take the flask down, take the Buchner funnel out. Now we have pure crystals. As you can see, they're much nicer than the crude ones. We now take these crystals and we will put them on our watch glass. Again, just the crystals, not the, vac not the filter paper. 
pen, you break up the crystals to again make sure the maximum surface area is exposed to the air to ensure drying. What we're now going to do is label the bottom with a label acid analyte. Now we're going to put our pure crystals in our drawer, cover it with a beaker, wait till next week so the crystals can be totally dry to take an accurate weight and melting point.